perhaps the, the most uh, difficult task for the OSCE is to transform this obvious political will, collective political will, into action. I would like to call the Secretary General of the OSCE Parliamentary Assembly, Mr. Roberto Montella, for his insight. Thank you, good morning. President Dimitriou, uh, Minister Kasoulidis, thank you very much for this conference. I'm honored and pleased to be here in Cyprus. It's my first time. Uh, I'm very pleased this is the first meeting that we have after two years of pandemic, the first time that we meet in person. So you're also giving a big gift to the Parliamentary Assembly, the possibility of our members before our annual session to actually meet in person. Um, I wish to express my sincere gratitude to you, Madam President, uh, for hosting us here. Also to Eleni and uh, uh, Michaelis and uh, an iconic figure in our Parliamentary Assembly, Marina, who have uh, been uh, working for this conference. Thank you very much for the work you've put into this conference. Um, we are here today discussing corruption, and, and I'm very happy that we're discussing uh, an issue that is different from the issue we have been discussing uh, from the 24th of February uh, throughout. Uh, I see here the members of the Diplomatic Corps. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, we've been, all our efforts, all our energy has been focused only on discussing uh, the uh, situation uh, on the war in Ukraine. But uh, it's good that we are actually focusing on other issues, which probably have also an impact on what is happening now in Ukraine. And if we are doing this, if we are actually here focusing on discussing uh, on corruption, I think we owe it to one person. And this person has been mentioned by many of you, but I think I cannot refrain by uh, expressing gratitude to Irene Karalambidis. Um, Irene, thank you very much. For some here have mentioned your passion, and uh, we all know about your passion. We've seen you speaking in our meetings when you passionately talk about uh, uh, the fight against corruption, also when you passionately defend the national interest of Cyprus in your back and forth with colleagues from the Turkish delegation. So we know about passion. I will not talk about the obvious. But I think what I would like to underline here is also the work that you've done with your colleagues, with parliamentarians, uh, in putting, impressing on them the importance of fighting corruption. This work has been done maybe not in conferences or in public speeches, but in the corridors, uh, behind the scenes, and it has made a huge impact because you see here we have uh, 60 members uh, of, uh, uh, from 29 countries, colleagues of yours from the Parliamentary Assembly, and mind, according to my statistics, this is the most attended meeting which is not a statutory meeting, annual session, winter meetings, or an election observation missions. So, of course, it's because after two years of COVID, there is a, an appetite for members of parliament also to engage and also do some activities. But it's also due to your credit, uh, Irene, on trying to really impress on your colleagues uh, the importance. And this is a work that you've done behind the scenes and for which I thank you. But I also like to thank you for another aspect, and this uh, helps me also lead into thanking our colleagues from the international community. And it's been the capacity to find the niche for parliamentarians in this fight against corruption. We are not the leading organization. We have here colleagues from the NOCD, from the OSC, from ODIR, Greco, World Bank, Transparency International. I'm sure I've forgotten someone and I apologize already. But your capacity to create a network with those who are the experts in the fight of corruption and trying to say, well, we don't have the monopoly on this fight, but we have to put together all the assets that exist in the international community to fight corruption. This has been extremely clever, and I know this is also thanks to the advice that you get from Marco and my colleagues in Vienna and Anya, and also thank them for the support that they've given to this conference. But I think this is where us, the Parliamentary Assembly, can add value being aware of who we are or what are our capabilities and work with members of the international community who have the expertise and combine these two together. So I think this is a great contribution that we've done and for this I thank you very much. Um, so, of course, I have already mentioned our colleagues on the international community. I will not come into the too much details on the fight against corruption. I'm not an expert. I'm here to learn from you and you have already heard from all our guest speakers what is the consequences of corruption. And I'm sure some of you would long to have now a coffee break. But it's been said, corruption is a threat to the very foundations of our societies. And on this I cannot agree more. And also, 
it also erodes the very principles of the OSC. Uh, the OSC has been founded and uh, protects uh, democratic institutions, uh, genuine and transparent elections, uh, the respect of human rights, media freedom, uh, respect of national minority rights, and the rule of law. So uh, corruption erodes all of these uh, principles that are very dear to us. And who are the victims uh, at the end of the day, besides our societies? Normally are the citizens. The citizens, what I like to call the end users of the OSC work, are the victims of corrupt societies. And parliamentarians are those who are the closest to the citizens. You represent, uh, in the OSC, we like to say we represent one billion citizens of the OSC, uh, of, the, of the world. You know, the, the OSC stretches from Vancouver to Vladivostok still. <laughs> so we have <laughs> still. <laughs> And I hope it will continue like that, but that's another issue. But we have one billion citizens in the OSC, um, in the OSC family, and uh, the parliamentarians are their representatives. Uh, so as the citizens are the victim of corruption, it's very important that parliamentarians engage, as Madam President mentioned, bring back the lessons in their national legislation and try to change uh, legislations and try to bring uh, the national legislations very stringent in order to fight uh, the corruptions that erodes the foundations of the societies. So we owe it to our citizens and I think uh, on that note uh, I will uh, leave you to enjoy a nice coffee break but I'm sure the moderator will tell us uh, what is the marching order after this. And I thank you all for this overwhelming participation. Thank you very much.